Well, hello there, folks. How are you doing? As usual, it's lovely to see you and a very warm welcome back to What's For Tea. Or if you're new, a warm welcome to you also. This is What's For Tea and my name's Cheryl. And for tea tonight, I'm going to be making these absolutely delicious haggis, neeps and tatty pies. Now, I don't think haggis, neeps and tatties needs too much of an introduction, but I'll just, I'll get there just in case you've not heard of it. If you haven't subscribed yet, why not consider subscribing just before you leave and hit the wee notification bell. So yeah, haggis, neeps and tatty pie, I mean, such a classic Scottish combination that, like I said, doesn't really need much explaining. It's basically mashed potato, mashed turnip, or you could use sweet if you prefer, and then a wee bit of haggis. So it's basically, you layer it up and you would have that on its own or with a wee whiskey cream sauce. I'm going to be doing a mustard and cream sauce tonight, but I'm going to be putting it inside a puff pastry case just instead of having it on its own because it would normally just be served as it is. But I thought just for a wee change, I'm going to give it a go because some of the bakers, you know, the local bakers to me, you can actually go in and buy them in pastry. But I've never actually done it myself, so this was a first time for me, but certainly something I'll be doing again in the future because, like I said, it was really, really easy to do and everybody loves them. They're crazy good. So, yeah, let's go and see what I've done. And as usual, all of the ingredients will be listed down below as well as the weights in grams and ounces. So, yeah, so let's go and see what's next. Now, the amount you will need will obviously depend on how many pies you want to make. I needed four, so these ingredients will give you four or five, depending on what size tins you use. So the first thing I've got there is around 400 grams of haggis. I allowed 100 grams per person. I've also got some white potatoes and I allowed one large potato per person. I've also got some, you can use diced sweet or you can use diced turnip, it's up to you. But I, I've got about 500 grams there. I've also got a sheet of ready-made puff pastry there's about 350 grams there. I've also got a good handful of grated cheddar, but you can use obviously whatever cheese you like. And I've got a couple of knobs of butter. One is for your mashed potato is one, and one is for your mashed turnip. And you'll also need some salt and pepper as you go just to taste. And this is the haggis that I used. And these are the wee tins that I used. I just get these ones from Lakeland and they're just the ideal size. And I'm also going to use a cookie cutter just to cut out my pastry because it's the perfect size. So the first thing you want to do is get over to your cooker. I'm going to need four pans and you want to get some cold water into your two largest pans. One is for your potatoes and one is for your turnip. So you just want to dice your potatoes and dice your turnip. Try and get them roughly the same size because they'll take about the same length of time to cook. Don't add any salt just now. You want to bring these up to the boil and then pop your salt in because if you pop your salt in right away, the water takes longer to come up to the boil. So you just want to simmer these until they're tender. Probably take about half an hour. While you're waiting, you can go on and do your haggis. This will not take long. So you want to make sure you take off your plastic film pop it into a pan and you're basically just want to heat this through and fry it for about five minutes till it goes nice and loose and just starting to catch on the bottom of your pan. Now you can just set that to the side to cool. You just want to test your potatoes and once they're nice and tender, you just want to drain them. And like I said, your turnip should be tender as well by this stage. I'm just going to pop a wee knob of butter and a wee splash of cream and mash these potatoes until they're nice and smooth. Once I'm about halfway, I'm going to pop the cheese in and just keep mashing, like I said, until they're lovely and smooth and I've got no lumps. I like to keep a wee bit of heat under my pan whilst I do this. I just feel as though it helps get the lumps out. And just going to do exactly the same to your turnip. Drain out the water or your swede, whatever you're using. I like to add a wee bit of white pepper into my mashed turnip and a wee knob of butter and that's it. So you just want to set everything to the side to let it cool before you put it in. You, don't, you know, it doesn't have to be cold, just cool it slightly whilst you get your pastry ready. So I've just 
I've got a wee cookie cutter here, slightly bigger than my pie tins. And this cookie cutter, I just love. It's great for lots of different things. Then grab your pie tins, and these are, you know, uh, these are um, grease proof, so I don't need to oil them or grease them in any way, but if you want to just, you know, make doubly sure, you can obviously grease your pans if you like. Pop in your pastry. Just make sure it's well tucked in to your corners and there are no bubbles. And pop them onto a baking tray. So the first thing you want to do is pop in a layer of your haggis. Now you don't put too much in because obviously you've still got your turnip and your potato to put on top. You just want to make sure you're leaving enough room to get your three layers on there. Just like this. Now, just at the last minute, <laughs> we were all meant to be having these at the same time, but turns out it was just me and Mr. What's for Tea that were here. So I just end up cooking the two and I just pop two into the fridge for later. So once you're happy, you can pop them into your oven. You just want to bake these for 25 to 30 minutes on gas mark 6, 200C or 400F. And your pastry will be lovely and golden and your potato will be nice and brown on the top, just like this. And I think putting grated cheese into your mashed potato really helps give this a lovely colour. So we just had ours, like I said, with some mashed potato, mashed turnip, mashed potato, mashed turnip. As you can see, there's still a nice bit of give in that pastry. It's not hard in any way. And I made up a quick cream and mustard sauce just on the side because I love a nice creamy sauce and as you can see they're really easy to get out the pan the pastry is lovely and golden and to give it a wee squidge you can see how nice and soft it is it's not hard at all Mr What's for Tea ugh, as shocking as ever wanted baked beans with his he likes baked beans with anything but mashed potato and this was mine inside. As you can see, all the layers there. And I'm going to pop a wee bit of sauce onto the top of mine. This is a really, really simple sauce. You know, it really, it's just um, one part cream, one part um, whole milk, a teaspoon of Dijon mustard and a tablespoon of English mustard. And you just give the whole thing a whiz together. Bubble it for a couple of minutes and that's it done. You know, there's no recipe there. It's so, so simple. And it's just something I like to knock up from time to time, especially when I'm hagging, having haggis, you know, and neeps and tatties. I think it just goes wonderfully with it. So that was it. Really, really simple and highly recommended if you do like haggis. If you don't, then obviously you're going to hate it. But if you do like haggis and your neeps and your tatties, try putting it into the pastry case because it just takes it to a whole new level, I'm telling you. It's absolutely gorgeous. So thank you as ever, guys, for popping over and checking out the wee recipe. And I should be back uh, with a wee shopping haul. We went to Tesco and Lidl today, so I'm just going to edit that video when I hang up just now. I'll get that done and hopefully get it up tonight as well as this, but if not, we'll be tomorrow morning at some point. And then I'm going to be doing the tiramisu just in time for Valentine's Day. And that's going to be a corker as well. Like I said before, one of my favorite things if I go to an Italian restaurant, if it's in the menu, I'll be ordering it. You know, so simple, but delicious as well. So until I see you next time, guys, mind to take care of yourselves. And I do mean that. And from our wee humble kitchen in Scotland to yours, wherever you are in the world. Lots of love. Bye for now. Bye now.